The gospel text I was given to preach on by the senior chaplain of Higher Things is from the Gospel of Matthew in the 10th chapter, verses 26 through 33. So have no fear of them, for nothing is covered that will not be revealed or hidden that will not be known. What I tell you in the dark, say in the light, and what you hear whispered, proclaim on the housetops. And do not fear those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, fear him who can destroy both body and soul in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? And not one of them will fall into the ground apart from your father. But even the hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear not, therefore. You are of more value than many sparrows. So everyone who acknowledges me before men, I also will acknowledge before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, I also will deny before my Father who is in heaven. In the name of Jesus, please be seated. So long as the most important thing in your life is to keep finding your own way, you are going to live in fear of losing your life. But once you are willing to be lost, to be a dead man walking, you will be home free. Your lostness and your deadness is the one thing no one, no one will ever be able to or want to beg, borrow, or steal from you. Your lostness and your deadness, dead broke, dead drunk, dead in sin, or just plain dead, is the only ticket that you need to get into the wedding feast of the Lamb. You see, fear, fear of failure, fear of rejection, fear of damnation, fear of coming in in last place drives you to establish your own way, your own righteousness. And so you struggle all your life, all your life you struggle to see yourself as a keeper of rules that you cannot keep, as a loyal subject of laws under which you can only be judged outlaws. But your need to prove yourself, your need to live a life that grabs God's attention is so deeply ingrained in you that you define yourself by your own struggles, your own striving, your own ways. In fact, this need runs so deep that you are convinced beyond a reasonable doubt that unless you watch your step, unless you watch your step, brothers and sisters, the divine watchbird will swoop down and take away your life. And so you spend your life trying to do the impossible instead of for even one carefree minute accepting that it has all been done for you by someone else. Your life is not something to be held on to. Your life is Jesus Christ, whose nail-pierced hands have got an unbreakable grip on you. And he is not going to save you by a miraculous band-aid kind of intervention. A storm calmed over there. A crowd fed over there. A mother-in-law cured back down the road. Instead, he saves you by means of a deeper, darker, hidden mystery at the center of which lay his own death. It is Jesus Christ raised from the dead who is your life and your resurrection and your resurrection. And if he refuses to condemn you because your works are rotten, he certainly is not going to flunk you because the rest of your life isn't so hot. You can fail utterly and completely, and still live by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone. You can fold up morally, spiritually, and intellectually, and you are still covered by the blood of the Lamb. Because at the very worst, at the very worst, all you can be at the end of the day is dead. But for Him, who is the resurrection and the life, that makes you fruit ripe for the picking. Your death is not the tragedy you think it is, brothers and sisters. It is your absolution. It is your freedom in Christ. After all, nobody can blame a corpse, can they? 
Once you are dead, you are out from under all the blame planters, the guilt spreaders, the gossip mongers. Forever. Yes, forever. That means by your baptismal death in Christ's name, you are free. Free from living in fear of the messes that you have made of your own life because your true life is hidden in Christ without a single condition of worthiness or a single pointless promise of fixing you up and helping you live your best life now. Your Heavenly Father raises you up baptized, a new man in Christ, whole, forgiven, free for nothing. And this for a world drowning in fear at living, this is the only wild and wonderful stuff. It's the only good news that really matters. Because it is the power of God that raises the dead. It's not up to you. It's not up to you. It is never up to you. Not at all. It is up to someone you can only trust and thank and confess to others. It is salvation by grace alone. Through faith alone. In Christ alone. And this not by any works so that no man may boast. There is therefore now no condemnation for two reasons. In your flesh you are dead now. But Jesus, the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world, has died your death for you. And as if that is not enough good news, in his resurrection you are raised from death, forgiven and justified. The blame game is over before it even starts. It really is. All Jesus does is send a preacher to announce this truth and tell you, you are free. This is, of course, dangerous stuff. It's a dangerous thing to do to announce to you that you are free. Freedom makes you dangerous. It makes you a threat. It makes you a menace to those who still cling to a life that Jesus can't use. But Jesus has done it. He makes you free. And therefore, dangerous or not, threat or not, menace or not, here you stand. You can do no other. Uncondemned, baptized, forgiven, now, today, and forever. Jesus does not say he will give your struggles and your strivings greater meaning or make allowances for your errors and your sin. He gets rid of them. He finishes the whole of your dead life off. And he raises you up to a new life which lives and moves and has its being in him alone. He does not so much deal with your failings as he does drop them down the black hole of his death. He forgets your sins in the darkness of his tomb. He remembers your iniquities no more in the oblivion of his last breath. Jesus finds you, in short, in the desert of death, not in the garden of improvement. And in the power of his resurrection, he baptizes you, bodies and bloodies you, words you. He raises you, in other words, from the dead, living and free, rejoicing to bring you home to his Father, to the wedding feast of the Lamb, which has no end. Amen. Amen.